a blessed day to everyone, to our uh, fellow worshipers in other parts of the world. We are in this so-called octave of Easter. Octave comes from the Latin word uh, octavus, meaning eight. After the, the, these two great feasts of the church, that of Christmas and Easter, they have this octave, eight days. I think it is obvious that this octave highlights the importance of the feast to which this octave is attached. And what's the function of this octave and in its importance? The octave is a kind of a prolong prolongation of the event celebrated. If an event is so important that uh, just one celebration would not be enough. Furthermore, speaking about the Paschal mystery being celebrated on, on Easter Sunday, you know, the central uh, celebration of our faith, we cannot possibly highlight all the dimensions of this great mystery of the, of the Paschal mystery. So the octave, and in fact the whole of the Easter season, 50 days, are there precisely to inculcate in us the importance of this, especially the joy of Jesus' victory over sin and death. Ritually, you must have noticed also that uh, its joyful character should be highlighted and emphasized throughout this season, the symbolism of the Paschal candle, the uh, symbolism of bright colors, flowers, the songs. No. These are all to remind us of the joyful character of this season, the joy of the resurrection, the joy of Jesus' victory. So, you must have noticed that uh, the uh, character of Easter Sunday is prolonged. Within these eight days, we sing the Gloria. And then, of course, every these uh, whole 50 days of Easter season wants to emphasize this character that we are Easter people and Alleluia is our song. The path of faith as the evangelist John says is expressed is articulated with the necessity of having proclaimers of having missionaries to bring this joyful character the joyful message of Easter for all like Mary Magdalene who could not stay longer at the foot of Jesus just to listen to assimilate and contemplate she can't just remain there waiting fixed beside the tomb in tears as she saw the Lord and heard her name called Mary Magdalene went to announce to these disciples I have seen the Lord here is the summary of everything of the good news it is here where we have sum the summary of what is being proclaimed, the Lord present, the Lord is alive, I have seen the Lord. And it is also the core of the message that should be given. Having gone up to the Father Jesus, the risen Lord, needs witnesses 
even the simple and ordinary ones like Mary of Magdala, not only the official witnesses whose first testimonies constitute the first link to that tradition, which is at the same time the foundation and the pillar of, faith, of our faith. But here we have small tradition also of simple witnesses who were given the privilege to see the risen Lord and to receive the gift of the Spirit. It is also interesting to note that Jesus appeared to those who loved Him, who were with Him in His ministry. Right away, Mary recognized Jesus with His familiar voice. In other words, one can truly witness to the Lord if one has grown familiar with the Lord's voice, with the Lord's ways, with the Lord's values. And that is the meaning of discipleship. That is the meaning of seminary formation and continuing formation of discipleship. To become familiar with the voice, with the ways, with the values of the Lord and learn at the feet of the Master. Only then we can become true witnesses of the risen Lord. Like Mary Magdalene, she could proclaim with joy and confidence because the Lord has appeared to her, to her and at the same time because she had known the Lord even before this event. May our journey of faith, of Christian faith, of our vocation, be fruitful as we meet the Lord every day with His presence. And may we become like Mary, proclaimers of the good news. We have also seen the Lord. Amen.